Hi again folks, how's all doing? Uh, this old Triang Jinty was uh, sent to me by one of my subscribers called Darren and uh, he said it just it just doesn't go anymore, it's just dead. Um, this was his very first locomotive, so uh, you know, I, I like to do these type of repairs where someone's, you know, there, you know there's some kind of uh, sentimental value to the thing, it's either their first locomotive or something that belonged to their dad or, or, or something, you know, it's, all, it's always good to have uh, something to repair that actually means something to someone and not just something they've bought off eBay and it doesn't work, you know. Um, not that the, any locomotive is less worthy of being repaired, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get this running for Darren again. Uh, he's going to do up the decals himself because they're in a bit of a state. Um, I might have a bash at fixing the chimney here because it's uh, cracked. It's quite common for these uh, to get broken chimneys with the, the body fixing screw going down in there. Um, but let's just see if this responds to any power at all. Turn it on, that's full power. Nothing. Nothing at all. So, we'll take this to the bench and take it apart and see if we can make it go. Okay, so the little Jinty, uh, you know, I think most of us have had one of these. Um, I used to have a green one. Uh, a long, long time ago. Uh, that may have been a double one, actually. Um, we had the Cardiff Castle and uh, a little green jinty. Um, no idea what happened to it. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you can get these things cheap as chips on eBay in various states of repair. But, uh, you know, this is Darren's first locomotive, so it obviously means a lot to him. And we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. So, uh, Gently remove this screw. Yeah, and there's steps broken off from this side as well. So we'll look at that later. So it's going to have the big flanges on the wheels, so it will uh, have lots of arguments with points. But, you know, we'll see if we can get it going. Uh, the motor... Well, it doesn't look too bad. The brushes are okay. It looks like it's had new brushes fitted at some point. Let's see what happens if we stick a battery on the brushes. No, nothing. I'll take this out. Oh, the insulating sleeve for the... it was a brush falling out. But that insulating sleeve at the end there is a bit rotten. I wonder if that's been causing a short circuit. Let's just put this on the other way around. See if we can get this brush back in. Okay. Stick a battery on this. Nope. Nothing. Hmm. That's a little bit worrying. Why is there nothing getting through to it? I think we'll, we'll get the, the motor out and we'll test it. That's okay. That's okay. That seems okay. Is there any connection? Ah, yes, I think it's the insulating sleeve. Isn't insulating. I think I've got another one. Let's see. Okay, so I've got a replacement sleeve. Uh, the old one, I think, you know, these things can get, you know, so saturated with oil and stuff that they, uh, they don't insulate anymore. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use a bit of uh, insulation off a wire or something. Right, let's pop this on. Get the brushes back in. Right, now, let's stick a battery on, what happens? There we go. That's all it was. Just that insulating tube was done. All right, okay. So we'll take all that out again. Now that we know that the motor works, 
take the magnet out just now. Ooh. The uh, rear plate on this one is brass, so it's an old one. It all looks okay. Right, we'll get the manky brush in here and get as much crap cleaned out as we can. I'll get the contact cleaner in. The commutator is probably the cleanest one I've ever had to deal with, um, so I'm pretty sure someone's been doing their cleaning. Right, I'm going off using cocktail sticks, uh, at least these ones anyway, they're not sharp enough. Uh, they don't fit in between the slots. So I'm going to go back to, where is it? The smallest uh, flat bead precision screwdriver. And you put that in and it scrapes them out nicely. I'm going to give the commutator a clean with tea cut anyway. Although to be honest, like I say, I don't think it needs it. There you are, one nice shiny commutator. Get some oil into this rear bearing and into the oil reserve. Right, I'm going to leave that just now. Uh, let's have a look at the chassis. Um, <laughs> yeah, these old triangle wheels. Oh, goodness me. Okay, how freely do these wheels move? Seem fine. I think the only way to get into the axles on this is to pull the wheels and I'm not doing that because um, the plastic bushes will just disintegrate I think if I pull them push and put them back on again. So we will uh, do the best we can to get rid of all the crap that's in there and it's just Probably carpet fibres. See if teacup works. Or I might take the wire brush to them. These old wheels are uh, pretty tough old things. So I've got to go over these with the rotary tool. They're not really cleaning up. It's just, you know, it's just too much dirt. I don't know if you can see the difference between the the cleaned wheel and the others. Okay, but that's the shiniest. Those wheels have been in a long time. All right, uh, what am I doing? Uh, right, okay, brushes. Let's have a look at them. Uh, the brushes are actually in pretty good condition. Um, I'll give them a quick. Squirt with that and give them a rub. But yeah, the brushes are fine. I just want to make sure that this side of the brush retaining spring is nice and clean uh, to ensure good contact with the brush. Lots of lovely oil in the reserves. Um, I don't have replacement uh, rear bearings for this, so if it turns out to be noisy, well, it's just going to have to be noisy, I'm afraid. So I just want to get some gear oil uh, either side of the thrust bearings. Now here's a tip. When you fit a magnet in these things, make sure there is no daylight at all between the motor frame and the magnet. Hold it up to a window or something, or a light, and make sure there's absolutely no daylight between the, the motor frame and the magnet, because if there is, you won't have good magnetism. Even if you stick it in a remagnetizer, it won't remagnetize correctly. So uh, this one seems okay. But, uh, if it's not, if you do have daylight, you may have to file down um, the the either the frame or the the, the plate itself to uh, to get it to fit. I've had to do that a couple of times. Pop this in the remagnetizer. One, two, that should do it. That should now be good and strong, which it is. Actually, I think this has been soldered the wrong way around. Let's just 
to even desolder that. Right. It's the right way round now. It's a bit better. Right, what happens if it's like a battery on the wheels? We have life. Right, okay, we'll get some uh, gear oil onto the gear. Lots of that. Okay, bit of test track. Pop this on. Does it go? Yay! Okay. Okay, let's pop the body on. How noisy, noisy is it going to be? Well, it's running. Um, I think this is going to be a bit noisy. But we'll go and see what this sounds like on the way out. Okay, let's turn on the power. It's a bit quieter than I expected it to be. How does it handle the points? Well. Well, that's running much, much better than I expected it to. Uh, I'm very pleased with that. That's uh, for an old triangente that's running exceptionally well. Right, let's see if we can do something with that chimney. So the chimney is a bit broken and we've got a missing uh, step here at the front. We've got both steps on this side. But there's a missing one on this side. Um, so I'm going to use some milli putt, which is just epoxy putty, to try and rebuild the chimney. And I will try to create a new step as well. I'm not sure how successful that's going to be, um, but we'll give it a go. Blob of that. A blob about the same size. And then we just knead it together. And then I'm going to take a little piece of it, less than that, I don't need much at all, and just squeeze it into the missing part of the chimney. I'll get the gloves off for this. And then really it's just a case of sculpting it while it's soft uh, into shape. You'll notice I've left the screw in and that's because um, you know I want the milli putt to form around the screw but I will loosen the screw before this sets. And it will be a bit rough, <laughs> but it'll be very rough um, until it sets and then I can sand it. Okay, so it looks really rough just now, but once that's set, that'll sand down and we can uh, hopefully get it to, to adjust the profile we want. Um, I'm not going to remove the screw at the moment, I'm just going to leave it a minute, because I want to try something with the steps. So I'll take a piece of milli putt. And then I'm just going to squeeze it over this step and then gently prise it off again. Does that give me an impression? So that's given me an impression of that step. So I'm going to let that set and try and use that as a kind of mould. So once this is set, I'll put some fresh milli putt uh, in there, squeeze it in, and then try and prise it out. And uh, Hopefully, I'll have a rough shape of a step that I can stick on. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, just mixing up some more milliput. And I'm going to flatten this bit out and see if this will work. So if I squeeze this bit milliput into that, cut away that excess, see if I can just 
gently peel this out. Okay, so uh, making the little mould didn't work out quite as well as I thought it would, but uh, it gave me enough to go on that I managed to model a step. It's going to need a little bit of uh, cutting down and filing, but if I let that set, I think that'll work. Okay, so the milliput's uh, nice and hard on this uh, chimney now. So I've just got to get filing. And it's just a case of filing away till I get this into the right shape. Uh, so it just requires a bit of patience because you have to do it slowly. Because the last thing you want to do is take off too much. So I'm filing the top down flush. Uh, first of all, and then the, the lip around the top is comes in at a slight angle. So I'll try and replicate that. So after filing into its, near enough its final shape, I've got to sand this down. Okay, so I think that's the chimney reconstructed. Once that's painted up, I think that'll look okay. I'm not entirely convinced that this body screw is the original one. It's got a domed head, and that doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. Um, you know, it's always going to be poking out the top. I would have thought that should be flat, um, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, right, okay, so my step. Let's have a look. So it's nice and hard. I'm not going to try and get it up because it is stuck to this tile, but that's actually good. It allows me to uh, get this filed down to the correct thickness, nice and smooth. Okay, let's see if this little Nearly put step will come off this tile. Oh, easy. Yeah, I didn't think it would stick to that very hard. Let's see if this will uh, look about right if I was stuck on there. Yeah, I think that won't look too bad. I think we'll need to. Uh, where's my file? Um, let's flatten this off a bit. Yeah, and then we'll need to. File this down. Okay, we'll get some uh, super glue gel onto this and hopefully that'll stick. Okay, got some super glue gel on this and we'll just bung it on. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, there's my milliput chimney repair and the little footsteps at the side there. We'll let that glue harden. And then we'll get that painted up. Okay, we'll use some acrylic matte black paint. Okay, that's a step done. And then we'll do the chimney. And there we go. There's the repaired chimney and steps. So there we go, all repaired. Uh, I kind of wish I'd been able to do the decals as well, you know, to do like a full transformation, um, but we'll leave that for Dan to do. Uh, I don't fancy uh, replacing all the lining. Um, I think if this was my locomotive, I'd probably just replace the emblem and, and the number and just leave everything else black. Anyway, let's go and stick this in the layout and uh, give it a few laps.
So there we are, that's Darren's old Triang Jinty uh, running exceptionally well for its age, I have to say. Um, it's that, that was a good one, you know, there was no faffing around trying to get it done quietly or, or smoothly. It just, you know, replaced that insulating sleeve on the motor and gave the thing a clean and an oil and off she went. Uh, and it was a uh, kind of fun uh, replace, uh, repairing the, the chimney and the steps there with Millie, but... Um, I wasn't sure how, how well that was going to work out, but I think that looks absolutely fine. So yeah, dead chuffed with that one. Right, we'll get this back off to Dan, and uh, well, what's next? Catch us later, folks. <laughs>